Moving on to site design, we have now topo solids by face. We can create topo solids on a non-vertical faces of a mass family. We can inspect the related mass check uh, checkbox to verify if the topo solid is derived from a mass, which such as right here in the properties. We have limited shape editing functionalities available, and we cannot select faces from different masses for the same topo solid. In other words, we can't create the, the two or three different masses and then try to create one topo solid based on that. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this works. Okay, as you can see here, we've created a project with three views tiled for ease of use. Let's go ahead into the massing and site. Let's make sure that show mass forms and floors is set on. And we'll go ahead into in place mass. If we want to, we can call this topo. Say okay to that. And let's start with a spline. Just a few splines. We're not gonna make it too complex. Go ahead and hit the escape key. Copy this a couple of, copy this a couple of times or adjust if we want to. The points. Okay, like that. Okay, let's go ahead and select it and copy it a few times. Let's say uh, three more times. Once one, two, three, and make it a total of four. Let's select them and then go ahead and create a surface based on that. Let's go ahead now and say uh, we come over here and tab. And once we have that done, we can then tab and select and move it in the south in the south view so we can see easier where we are. Let's come back over here and into the site plan and let's go ahead and select the whole thing. Okay, we use a little hard to select. Back into South View and let's move it up and let's go ahead and select the last line here and move it up some more. Okay. Now, what, once this is done, we can actually obviously move the points around if, if, we, if we so wish. Okay, we're just grabbing them along and just pushing them some up, pushing some down, whatever it is that we need to do in order to make this much more like a topo surface. Okay, and at this point, we just go ahead and say finish the mass. Okay, so at, it, obviously at this point, it's just a mass. Okay, it is, as we can see, it's a, a positive surface. If we come over here to edit in place, and we select the object, it should give us that it's a solid form right there, okay? So that's very important to know. It cannot be a negative form or a, a void. So let's go ahead and X out of that. And the next thing is to go back to massing in sight and then go to the topo surfaces, which basically says that we're going to create a topo surface based on the face. And then you just select this one, and we say create topo solid, at which case, we can then come over here to the 3D view. And let's go ahead and make it into a textured item. And as you can see, uh, let's go back over here and massing inside and turn this part off. As you can see here, let's go ahead and also maximize this view. Let's go ahead and un and then place it here. And then let's go into view and Let's go ahead and go ahead and close this one. Let's close this one. So we can take a better look and see at what it is that we've done. As you can tell here, let's go ahead and switch it from realistic to consistent coloring so we can see better. We've created basically a topo surface from a 3D or massing solid that we created. So with that, we've seen how to create a massing that will then be eventually turned into a topo. Let's move on. Now we come to the site design, excavated surfaces hosts, hosts elements. What does that mean? It means that you can actually now go ahead and bring in a family that is a, a face based, as it says so right here, exposed surfaces of, of, of cut topo solids can host 
face-based components, such as a tree, for example, or a railing, and then it can host it on the exposed area that you see here. Not only that, but the family itself will also tell you who is host, who is it hosting it, such as the topo solid, as we see here in the properties. So with that, let's take a look and see how that works. Okay, here we have gone ahead and created a topo surface based on an imported file. And let's go ahead and start with getting into level one if necessary. Okay, and we'll go ahead and create a floor. Okay, let's go ahead and make sure that everything is in the right place. Go ahead and create our surface like this. Let's go ahead and edit this uh, generic 12 inch, make it, um, make it a two footer just for the sake of argument. Say okay to that. Okay, and let's go ahead and check. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and say that this object is going to have an excavated object, which is this one right here. Great. Now let's go ahead and create a section to make sure that this is actually working the way we expect it. Okay, let's go ahead and go like this. And let's move over to our sections. And we see that we need to actually move this item down a bit. And as you can see, by the look in the section itself that is actually excavating into our actual uh, uh, topo solid or topo surface. Let's go back into 3D. And for the sake of argument, to make sure that we're actually going ahead and actually hosting our family onto the surface of the topo itself and not the slab here, let's go ahead and hide the slab. So we hit the element and let's go ahead now into the massing and site, which will have the site components. And we can then go ahead and create an object that is going to be then based on the actual surface. Okay, so you can create most of, the, uh, of everything that you want on this surface or you can move over to the actual contoured area rather than the excavated area and you can actually place your trees anywhere on the contoured area it will recognize the particular uh, surface that uh, area that it's actually going you're actually um, highlighting and it will place the tree at that height say for example we have some over here and let's say a little bit close to the pinnacle here and then just make sure we have some here and here and let's see what that looks like in our section here let's escape okay let's go ahead and say section here and as you can see the actual trees have been placed in the proper placement upon the actual topo surface okay not only that as we said earlier the actual object when you select it it will actually tell you where it is actually being Hosted. It's going is being hosted right now at the Topo Solid Grassland, which is what this one is right now. So with that, we've seen how we can actually host our families on a topo surface. Now remember they are face-based. Moving on now into site design, contour displays when editing. Contour lines are now visible when shapes editing and to a topo solid. Contour visibility responds to graphic overrides and contour type settings. So let's take a look and see how that works. Okay, in this one, we have the same topo surface that we had before. Let's go ahead and see how we can invoke the points. Okay, by selecting the object, we notice that the points aren't actually visible. Okay, we have to actually go ahead and, and add a spline or whatever in order to see them. Okay, so it, the question here becomes is, how can we actually go ahead and make these points visible when we select the surface? Well, we first select the surface and invoke preview points. And at this point, you can start to see all of the preview points without having to go into the, into the editing uh, part of the actual topo surface. Okay, if we actually go ahead and turn this on, let's say for the add a split line, you will notice that you were able to see also the contour lines or that rather the split lines that are happening here for the for the points so we can actually go ahead and turn this into a hidden line in order to go ahead and be able to see much more clearly where all of our 
actual split points are. So with that, we have seen now how to get our surface, surface points to be shown without necessarily going into our modification tool. Another improve, improvement in site design is the shape editing snaps. When shape editing a floor, roof, or topo solid is enabled or disabled, the snapping to inner points and edges will be now turned on by the use of this little actual option right here. Snapping options are along the surface, X, Y, snap, Z on topo surfaces, such as right here. Okay, you absolute X, Y snaps, Z based on elevation-based settings. You have the snap X, Y, and Z, X and Y, and Z snapping to a 3D point. And we also have some limitations. You cannot snap to splines. Snapping is conditioned by view range and prioritize endpoint and midpoints of the actual topo. Let's see how that works. Okay, we are now back to our solid topo surface that we have here when we invoke where we invoke the editing preview points now in order to be able to snap to these points we come over here and we say snap to editor points and lines and so we can actually now go ahead and say split line and we can go from anywhere on the line itself it used to be very difficult to be able to pick on the line itself this way, but now we can actually go ahead and create our points in this fashion, which allows us to then go ahead and break. We can even, as I said, go to one point from one point to the other, and it will go ahead and create all of the necessary subdivisions as required to keep the topo surface nice and valid. So with that, we have come to see how the Snap to editor points and lines are invoked and used.